Hi, I'm Anderson. I'm um, originally from Sioux City, Iowa, um, but I've been residing in Connecticut for the last uh, 13 years. Um, since I've uh, lived in Connecticut, I've actually worked at uh, Pryant & Whitney in East Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, I feel I've been very fortunate to work there and I've uh, had a very good time in my experience and my progression in my career there up until this point. Um, I actually was an undergraduate at the University of Hartford. Um, I completed my bachelor's in mechanical engineering there. And I also completed my master's of engineering at the University of Hartford. And uh, now I'm enjoying my time at the Barney School of Business and uh, finishing up my MBA degree as well. I'm looking to um, help that and advance me for a little bit further in my career and uh, try to you know, eventually obtain a, a higher position within the engineering organization uh, that I'm so fond of. Um, so I've been working in the engineering department, as I said, for, for, that, for that 13 years, and I've, I've held a lot of different positions there um, since I've uh, been on the company, always trying to progress and uh, learn new things and move forward. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a pretty positive experience for me so far. Um, you know, I started uh, my career early as a, um, as a design drafter um, with only an associate's degree before I moved out here from Iowa. And I started working as a drafter um, at Pat Whitney, but it, you know it was a way to get into the company, get started. I, I knew my ambitions were higher to uh, to move up and uh, you know get more education and, and be, you know try to see as far as I could go with that, uh, with engineering really being my passion and what I wanted to do. Um, so, but I discovered very quickly, you know, I, I was um, I worked very hard. I was go getter, so to speak, um, especially in the early part of my career. And, you know, I found myself as a task leader pretty quickly, and um, that allowed me the opportunities to, you know, take charge and uh, run, run a little bit of the organizational responsibility that I was in at the time. Uh, I got to delegate work, um, but uh, the most important thing I found um, at that time in my first kind of leadership role um, was that the number one thing you could do uh, to get people to respond to you um, was to take responsibility um, and make sure that they understood that you were sticking up for them and you were looking out for their best interest. Um, and I found that was really the most effective way to do it. Um, usually if uh, when I was checking work or anything like that for uh, some people that were doing work for me, if that went up and it turned out there were mistakes or issues or anything like that, um, I would always take the brunt of uh, the issues and I would never roll back on my employees or the people that were working for me. And they were aware of that and they respected that and, they, and I also treated them with the utmost respect and uh, let them know that they were value, valuable members of the team and that we valued their contributions. Um, you know, but uh, but even through the, that role, you know, I, I, I was pretty comfortable with that. And, uh, I still continued to work hard and move forward. And next I progressed to a new uh, engineering position where I think it was part of a leadership group called Methods Engineering. And uh, Methods Engineering we're primarily re responsible for managing the uh, human machine interface. So in this instance, we were dealing with uh, computer design and product data management methods and tools uh, for the entire engineering organization at Pratt Whitney. Now that was an interesting position in terms of uh, our primary responsibility in, in addition to researching uh, new tools and things like that was that you really had to do a lot of project management, um, but you also were, were the business owner for a lot of these tasks, and therefore uh, you had to sell the concept not only to your stakeholders, or the, the people you were looking to assist, but you also had to sell these ideas to the executive leadership at the company. Uh, so we spent a lot of time trying to convince people to come, uh, come over to my side of thinking on things, or our organization side of thinking, or and oftentimes even bridging the gap between what the aims were for the IT organization and in what the um, engineering organization was trying to achieve. Um, so that was really important and uh, learning the effective of communications and negotiation and uh, really making sure that everybody wins. And that's really the important thing in, in that context is that uh, there really needs to be a positive sum experience uh, to be an effective leader for everyone. Um, the people that are all involved have to get something out of it in the end. Uh, you really don't want any losers, um, especially when you're talking in terms of within an organization, uh, because that will follow you around. Um, so I spent a large porter, portion of my career in that position. Um, and it was very rewarding, and I got to learn a lot, and particularly um, in social interactions and uh, dealing with external individuals. Uh, also coordinating uh, efforts overseas and uh, domestically, which was a very good learning experience for me. 
Um, but, you know, as I was, as I said, I was beginning to progress forward in my own development, and I, I wanted to continue to build skills and new skills and continually challenge myself, which I think is a very important thing in the, uh, developing yourself and growing as a person. And, you know, in order to become a more effective leader, um, I think you have to always be willing to uh, change your mindset and, and uh, challenge uh, your own preconceived notions and try new things and, and really uh, be afraid to fail. Um, I've been fortunate to this point that, you know, while, while I've had, there have been some failures along the way, more or less, uh, I've been successful in, in the things I've attempted to do. So, um, in this context, I wanted to take on more of a technical role. And, you know, the nice thing about personal growth is that while I started my career thinking, you know, I was really focused on design and CAD technology and, and things of that, and uh, the more I began to work with computers and um, software development, the more I discovered I really had a strong interest in that. And a little bit of further research showed, you know, I, I started to look towards the future and thought, well, you know, the future is really in the computer machine, uh, you know, synergy. So what we refer to as mechatronics, it's the integration of uh, traditional engineering, but uh, also with taking in some electrical engineering and computer engineering, systems engineering discipline altogether. Um, the best organization I found for this fit at Pratt Wendy was in the um, uh, controls and the uh, controls design department. So uh, a few years ago, I, I moved over to that department. Interestingly, in the short time I've been there, I've already become uh, the um, integrated product team leader for the actuation systems for a number of the uh, commercial lending programs that are currently being run. And uh, now I'm serving as the focal point for that and have sole responsibility for, for making sure that uh, everything in that uh, in those contexts is accurate and works properly and is uh, meeting our business needs. So, um, so far, I, you know, I'm pretty excited with what I've done to date and I'm pretty happy with those things. Um, you know, the nice thing is I'm always being challenged to, to do new things and I'm, I'm always looking for an opportunity to grow myself. And those are really, in, I think, really the most important things that you can try to do to develop yourself personally. Um, to do that, I think one of the other things, I guess if I could give you some lessons from my own career, some things, some things that held me back and I may have progressed more quickly in my career, was that uh, you, you really need to surround yourself with positive and ambitious people. Um, they really help you keep in a positive state of mind and they also help motivate you. Also keep in mind, uh, don't be afraid to work around people or with people that, you know, uh, are better at, than you. Um, the best thing is you can do from that is you have to understand that there are always going to be people that are better than you. Um, what you really need to take away is um, how, what can I learn from them? That's the most important thing. What can I learn from these people that, that can better me? You know, maybe I won't be as good as that person, but, you know, I can still make myself better. And uh, once again, always try to maintain a positive state of mind and, and really keep that teamwork mentality. Um, I think the number one thing as far as progression goes is that um, you always want to make sure that you understand what the value stream is in your organization. And by that, I mean, you know, what's important and what's valuable. Um, one of the things that I think people get caught up in a lot is that um, they just do what they're told. They only execute those tasks that they're assigned, and they never really question the the, um, the value of what they're doing. And uh, I think it's important to understand uh, where the real value is in the organization, and then you work on your you work yourself towards those things to to show that you're concentrating on those things, and those are the things you're trying to solve for your organization. <clears throat> and um, I think the other thing I think I, I advice I would give was one of my personal feelings early in my career, particularly, was not feeling a sense of empowerment. Um, you know, believing that power had to come from elsewhere and not realizing that you have the power to enable change on yourself. And uh, you really want to be constructive. You want to take the action. You want to take ownership of things. That is the, those are some of the best traits you can have and identify uh, to show other people that you have those leadership skills and that you can do that show that you're willing to take ownership of something and you're willing to deliver on it, okay? And when it comes to delivery, <coughs> you want to really make sure that you're concentrating on timely delivery of anything you're assigned and anything that you do. Um, really, what people want to see in you, I think the most, some of the most effective things you can do is not only take that ownership, as I stated before, 
um, but really drive it home. Uh, stamp, you know, do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to do something, say when you're going to get it done and get it done by that time. And uh, that way they understand that you're reliable. All right, now, uh, you may fail at this sometimes. That's fine. Um, you know, things come up. We are all of our control. But it's something you should really strive for. Um, and sometimes timely delivery is more important than a per perfected delivery. I know myself, I, I tend to get really caught up in details and, and concentrate a little too much on the perfection of something and uh, don't focus on essentially getting the ball uh, down, the, down the court, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> so uh, always do the right thing. Uh, one other thing, a kind of a, a rule of thumb that I've always followed in my career that's turned out to be valuable too is um, it's, Sometimes it's better to just do the right thing and uh, then beg forgiveness uh, because sometimes waiting for permission uh, can just stifle progress. And, uh, you know, if you know what the right thing to do is, it's best to just execute on it. All right. And um, as far as my personal leadership uh, beliefs and motivations, um, Kind of as I, I, I spoke to you before, um, I really believe in leading by example, example and taking ownership and uh, having accountability for the things I do. And um, <clears throat> also by demonstrating a passion and showing other people how interested, you know, uh, how, how interested you are in the work and, and how fascinating you think the work is and your own drive for it can uh, a lot of times actually help to motivate the people around you. And uh, <clears throat> um, another thing that I, I've done on the, on, on the side, in addition to working for Pat one of these years, is I'm actually an adjunct uh, professor of engineering at a community college. And one of the things I focus on with my students there is first to build an enthusiasm for the subject before I really work hard on them for understanding the subject. Because I think one will go, one will fall in line with the other. Essentially, if, if I get them to really enjoy the subject, to really like the subject, see the value of the subject, then they'll work hard at it and the rest will come along in time. Um, but if I, if I just focus on just driving them to get the right solution, they become resentful, upset, they don't, they don't enjoy doing the work. And uh, I, I don't think that's the right way to do, it, to do that. Um, <clears throat> another thing um, is that you need to recognize that um, most of the time, the best ideas don't always come from the most experienced or talented members of your team, but often can come from just the people that are the most creative thinkers. And the creative thinkers are interesting because the unique capability they have is that they don't see constraints the same way everyone else does. And that can actually be your benefit, or at least make you question why do constraints exist? Why are we allowing ourselves to be bound by these? Um, a lot of times, the things we hold ourselves back on really aren't as important when we really start to investigate them. And I think that's where um, you, know, you really need to make sure that everybody's opinion has a value and take everyone's opinion to heart when you're, when, uh, you're working with them. Uh, don't just perceive just because one person's better or your perception is that one person is better at a task than another, that their ideas don't have an equal amount of value. Um, <clears throat> in terms of social responsibility and executing on that, um, remember that the aim of the business, uh, your organization, I believe, is to add value to everyone. Um, that's the employees, that's the management, um, that's society as a large, whatever product or service you're providing should be adding that greater value. In addition to that, clearly, um, value also has to come to, uh, go to your shareholders as well in the form of uh, profits. But, um, you know, that doesn't mean you don't do it in a socially responsible way, and, and that uh, doesn't mean that... Uh, you do anything you can to achieve that organization. Uh, one of the aims of the system is always to say, stay first, what is the point of the, uh, what is the aim of the system? Don't just let that rise out um, organically. Uh, you have to say, what is our aim? What are we trying to accomplish here? And do it in the most respectable way uh, possible. Um, make sure you're, whatever you're doing is value added to everyone. And remember that a lot of times that ethical leadership and doing the right thing um, also means that you have to challenge preconceived notions in order to do the right thing. <coughs> and uh, it's uh, critical uh, that uh, sometimes you have to break the rules even to do that, to do what's in your conscience. conscience. Uh, I remember reading once politicians saying that, um, yes, I'm here to execute the will of my constituency, but however, at the end of the day, I have to vote with my conscience. And I think that's very important. So, once again, um, 
I think in, uh, when you go to make your decisions as to what you're going to do next and how you're going to proceed and evaluate your career, um, your career decisions, make sure that you're focusing on that thing which excites you, that thing that you're most passionate about. <clears throat> because if you do that, you're going to enjoy your work, you're going to be happier, you're going to be more productive. And trust me, if you already have those things, eventually the, the monetary rewards, the recognition, all that will follow. If you try to chase those things first, you'll be unhappy, you won't be able to actually make it harder to achieve those goals. Um, the other thing, though, is try to identify very early on what you want to do. Get that idea in your head early because the sooner you can figure that out, the sooner you can start working to obtain it. If you meander a lot early, it, you're going to lose your momentum, and momentum is critical for success. I can tell you that right now. It's very easy to lose momentum and try to maintain it. Once it's lost, it's very difficult to regain uh, from that point forward. Uh, once again, um, I think you're going to have a, a great time uh, at the Barney School of Business. Uh, I know I've very much enjoyed my courses here, particularly in the, uh, the course I'm in right now, the leadership course. Uh, I think I've learned some great things. It's given me a great opportunity to reflect on some of my own leadership uh, experiences, what I've done right, what I've done wrong, the things I can continue to work on in the future. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed my video.